This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Good evening, boxing fans, and welcome to part nine of the Boxing Survey series. This open survey was conducted in the classic section of BoxingForum24.com, and 24 volunteers participated. I did not personally participate in the survey as I did not want my opinions to influence the final outcome. For the traditional eight weight classes, each volunteer provided a top 15 list. And this was the scoring system that was used for each of those eight surveys. But in this survey, each participant provided a top 25 all-time list, independent of weight classes. So this is the new scoring system for the all-time survey. It is very similar to the other scoring system. 100 points for a first place vote, so the maximum point total any individual boxer can receive is still 2,400. But this time the points are spread out over 25 places instead of 15. So the numbers are a little different. The end result here is that instead of being responsible for allocating 453 points, in this survey, each of the 24 allocated a total of 630 points under this similar scoring method. In total, there were 67 different boxers mentioned among the 24 participants for the all-time survey. So let's take a quick look at the top 35. And the reason I'm making that the cutoff point is simply because the majority between 36 and 67 only received mention on one list, and those that appeared on a few typically had lower scores in the grand scheme. So without further ado, number 35 is Jimmy McLarnon. 33 points for McLarnon, and he appeared on 7 out of 24. Previously, McLarnon had no top 10 finishes, but he did have the 14th highest score in the welterweight survey. And just a quick note, all of the information at the bottom with the records, that data is coming from what currently appears on BoxRec. Number 34 is Alexis Arguello. 37 points for Arguello, and he appeared on 5 out of 24. Arguello received mentions in two of the eight divisional surveys. Arguello had the 14th highest score in the lightweight survey, and he also earned a top 10 finish at featherweight. Arguello finished 8th place in the featherweight survey. So Arguello had two top 15 finishes in the divisional surveys, and here in the all-time survey, he cracked into the top 35. Number 33 is Larry Holmes. 43 points for the Easton Assassin, and he also made appearances on 5 out of 24. Holmes also had a solid third place finish in the heavyweight survey, with 1,000 plus and all 24. So with considerably high tallies in boxing's marquee weight class, and a top 35 spot here, Holmes performed very well in the grand scheme of this survey series. Number 32 is Packy McFarland. He received 44 points and he got mentions on 6 out of 24. McFarland also received 9th place honors in the scoring of the lightweight survey. So 25% of the participants had McFarland on their top 25 all time, and that enabled him to edge out the Eastern Assassin by a single point. Number 31 is Terry McGovern. Terrible Terry scored 64 points and he appeared on 8 out of 24. So 1 out of 3 had McGovern included on their top 25. And McGovern also had mentions in two of the eight divisional surveys. McGovern had the 12th highest score at featherweight. And he also had a top 10 finish at bantamweight where McGovern earned himself an 8th place finish. So two top 15 finishes for McGovern in the divisional surveys, and just outside the top 30 here in the all-time. Good stuff. At number 30, we have Gene Tunney. The Fighting Marine had a total of 69 points, and he received mention by exactly half here with 12 out of 24. Tunney received mention in two weight classes. He finished just outside the top 20 at heavyweight, and in the light heavyweight survey, Tunney received the fourth highest score. So a top 10 finish at 175, and here on the all-time survey, Tunney cracks the top 30. Number 29 is Iron Mike Tyson. 72 points for Tyson, and he only appeared on 2 out of 24. 
Of course, Mike also cracked the top 10 in the heavyweight survey, where a single first place vote helped lift him to a ninth place finish at heavyweight. So good stuff from Mike. But interesting, he is inside the top 30 here with only two mentions, where he received two points for a 24th place vote and 70 points because someone ranked him number three in the all-time survey. Number 28 is Sandy Sattler. Sattler was awarded 75 points where he appeared on 10 out of the 24 surveyed. And of course, Sattler also had an outstanding second place finish during the featherweight survey, where he produced powerhouse numbers with nearly 2,000 points and a perfect 24. So here in the all-time survey, Sattler appeared on eight more lists than Tyson, but even with eight extra mentions, he only just edged Tyson out by three points here. Number 27 is Julio Cesar Chavez. Chavez finished with 76 points and he made appearances on 8 out of 24. Previously, Chavez finished 15th place in the lightweight survey, so no top 10 finishes for Chavez, but the former three-division world champion was still held in high regard in the grand scheme. The fact that Chavez did some of his best work in weight classes outside of the traditional eight undoubtedly hampered him in the divisional surveys, but his overall body of work was rewarded here in the all-time survey. Number 26 is Marvelous Marvin Hagler. The Marvelous one finished with 86 points and he received mention on 9 out of 24. Hagler also received tremendous point totals in the middleweight survey, where he had over 1,500 points, but because of the fiercely competitive battle for the top spot at middleweight, he only finished 4th place despite the stellar scores. So Hagler finishes just outside the top 25 in the all-time survey, much like he finished just outside the top three at middleweight. Number 25 is Thomas the Hitman Hearns. 88 points for the Motor City Cobra, and he appeared on 11 out of 24. Previously, Hearns was awarded a 7th place finish in the welterweight survey, but that was the only weight class where the former multi-division world champion received any mentions. Even still, a top 10 finish in the welterweight survey and a top 25 finish here in the all-time survey mark the hitman as a great standout in boxing history. Number 24 is Edder Joffrey. 99 points for Joffrey, and he appeared on 13 out of 24 in the all-time. Previously, Joffrey had one of the most incredible performances in the survey to date when he produced powerhouse numbers in the Bantamweight survey. There, he had over 2,200 points, a perfect 24, and he also received a staggering 18 out of 24 first place votes. So here in the all-time survey, Joffrey is the first reveal for someone who amassed more than 2,000 points in any of the eight divisional surveys. Number 23 is Tony Canzanari. Canzanari received 119 points and he appeared on 14 out of 24. Canzanari received mention on two of the divisional surveys. He finished outside the top 20 at featherweight, but in the lightweight survey, Canzanari received the sixth highest score. So again, top 10 in one of the divisional surveys and inside the top 25 here. He is also the first boxer in the all-time survey to receive mentions from more than half of the survey participants. Number 22 is Carlos Monzon. 137 total points for Monzon, and he appeared on 9 out of 24. Of course, Monzon also had mighty impressive numbers in the middleweight survey, which earned him second place honors there. Here in the all-time survey, he was on five fewer lists than Canzanari, but Monzon was held in higher regard on the lists where he did appear. So impressive performance for Monzon. Number 21 is Pernell Whitaker. Sweet P earned 157 points and he appeared on an impressive 18 out of 24. Whitaker received mention in two divisional surveys. 
He had the 20th highest score at welterweight, and in the lightweight survey, Sweet Pea earned himself an impressive fourth place finish, where he just missed out on the two exclusive clubs of 1,000 plus and all 24. Here in the all-time survey, three out of every four people believed that Sweet Pea deserved the spot somewhere inside the top 25. At number 20, we have Jimmy Wilde. He just edged it out over Sweet Pea with 158 points, and Wilde received mention on 16 out of 24. Previously, Wilde was awarded first place in the flyweight survey, and he basically ran away with it. Wilde had over 2,000 points, a perfect 24, and received an incredible 19 out of 24 first place votes. So a top 20 finish for Wilde here in the all-time survey, and again, Wilde is one of just six boxers to have received more than 2,000 points in any of the divisional surveys. Combine that impressive feat with a top 20 finish here, and Wilde is obviously someone held in very high esteem by those in the survey. Number 19 is Barney Ross. 174 points for Ross, and he was listed on 17 out of 24 in the all-time survey. Ross is another guy who previously received mention in two of the divisional surveys. He had the 16th highest score at lightweight, and in the welterweight survey, Ross earned himself a top 10 finish where he placed 9th. So finishing inside the top 20 here, Ross is another boxer who has performed very well in this series, where he finds himself in the midst of various discussions pertaining to past greats. Number 18 is Mickey Walker. The toy bulldog received 193 points and he appeared on 14 out of 24. Walker also received mention in two of the divisional surveys. He had the 12th highest score at welterweight, and Walker finished in 9th place in the middleweight survey. Ironically, Walker received 7 fewer mentions at middle than he did at welter. Regardless, here in the all-time survey, Walker finds himself inside the top 20 with a very respectable 18th place finish. Number 17 is Floyd Mayweather Jr. 234 points for Mayweather, and he made appearances on 15 out of 24. Mayweather fared well in two divisional surveys, despite finishing just outside the top 10 in both. Mayweather had the 12th highest point total at lightweight, and in the welterweight survey, he technically finished in 11th place. Floyd was tied for the 10th highest point total at Welter, but because of the tie-breaking protocol, he was pushed to 11. Either way, that's two top 12 finishes for Floyd in divisional surveys, and here in the all-time survey, he finishes just a bit outside the top 15. So Floyd still performed very well in the grand scheme here, where he was just outside the top 10 in two historically rich divisions, and most of his career was otherwise spent in divisions outside the traditional eight. Number 16 is Manny Pacquiao. The Pac-Man got 239 points and he appeared on an impressive 18 out of 24. Pacquiao previously received mention in two divisional surveys, finishing just outside the top 15 in both. He had the 16th highest score at welterweight and the 18th highest score at featherweight. But here in the all-time survey, Pacquiao fared much better where 3 out of 4 viewed him as belonging in the top 25 all-time. Pacquiao is the poster boy of a boxer whose career is better defined by his entire body of work stretching across several weight classes, rather than his achievements in any given weight class. And like Mayweather, Hearns, and Chavez, Pacquiao spent much of his career competing outside of the traditional eight. At number 15, we have Joe Gans. The old master scored an even 300 points and he received mention on 19 out of 24, which is the most mentions we've seen so far. Previously, Gans earned an impressive third place finish in the lightweight survey. Impressive stuff here. 
to be perceived as the top three in one of the traditional eight and a top 15 all time, that is indicative of someone with a very strong reputation. And 19 out of 24 is a pretty solid majority. So most of the members of the survey believed that Gans belonged in the top 25, and based on his placement, that earned him the 15th highest score in the all-time survey. Number 14 is Roy Jones Jr. Roy amassed 324 points, he appeared on 14 out of 24, and Jones also received one first place vote. So Jones is the first boxer in the all-time survey to receive a first place vote. And previously, Jones received mention on two divisional surveys. Jones had the 13th highest score at middleweight, and in the light heavyweight survey, Jones finished in 9th. So Jones is viewed as a top 15 light heavyweight, a top 15 middleweight, and also a top 15 all-time period. Jones got six fewer mentions than Gans, but the strength of that first place vote he received enabled Jones to outpoint him here. Number 13 is Archie Moore, the old mongoose. 347 points for Archie and he also appeared on a stellar 23 out of 24. So just one member of the survey had the old mongoose outside the top 25. Previously, Archie had a fantastic showing when he was awarded second place honors in the light heavyweight survey. In both instances, Archie was on 23 out of 24. But here in the all-time survey especially, receiving almost unanimous recognition for his greatness is something that is worthy of attention. In other words, when 23 out of 24 people agree that someone belongs inside the top 25 of all time, that tends to suggest that this viewpoint holds an awful lot of merit. Number 12 is Sugar Ray Leonard. 358 points for Leonard and he also appeared on a perfect 24 out of 24. That marks Ray as the first to do so in the all-time survey. Previously, Leonard had excellent results in the welterweight survey, where his strong point totals earned him a second place finish. So here in the all-time, everyone in the survey agreed Ray belonged inside the top 25, and that landed him just a bit outside the top 10. Leonard is another one of those guys who spent a good chunk of his career competing in divisions that were outside the traditional eight. So second place at Welter, and 12th place all time. Very solid performance for Sugar Ray Leonard in the survey series. Number 11 is Benny Leonard. The Ghetto Wizard received 369 points and he appeared on 20 out of 24. So four fewer lists than Ray, but Benny still managed to score 11 more points. Technically speaking, Benny Leonard was tied for the most points in the lightweight survey. But because of the tie-breaking protocol, Benny was bumped back to two. But Leonard had impressive tallies at lightweight, and he has equally impressive tallies here. So the tie-breaking protocol prevented him from winning the lightweight survey, and now Benny finishes just outside the top ten. Still impressive stuff, but Benny just misses out on the gold standard not once, but twice. And speaking of the gold standard, we are about to begin the final top 10 countdown. At number 10, we have Joe Lewis. 495 points for the Brown Bomber, and he received a mention on 21 out of 24. Previously, Lewis had staggering totals in the heavyweight survey, where he earned second place honors. So a second place finish in boxing's marquee weight class and a 10th place finish for the all-time survey. Ladies and gentlemen, this is truly exceptional stuff in the context of this survey series. And Lewis accomplished these hefty totals despite being left off one list at heavyweight, and he was also missing in action for three different lists here in the all-time survey. But he still accumulated the points, and he was 126 points higher than 11th place Benny Leonard. So needless to say, Joe Lewis had a damn fine performance in these surveys. At number 9, we have Willie Pep. 
The Will of the Wisp scored 572 total points, and he appeared on a perfect 24 out of 24. Pep also dominated the featherweight survey, where he tallied over 2,000 points, appeared on a perfect 24 out of 24, and received a mind-boggling 20 out of 24 first place votes. So like the previous reveals with Edder Joffrey and Jimmy Wilde, Pep is just one of a few guys to receive more than 2,000 points in one of the divisional surveys and 21st place votes represents a very strong consensus. There was no question that those in the survey viewed Pep as the greatest featherweight of all time, so it is not at all that surprising to see him finish inside the top 10 in the all-time survey. At number 8, we have Bob Fitzsimmons. 651 points for Fitzsimmons, and he received mention on 19 out of 24. That's the fewest mentions we've seen since Roy Jones in 14th place, which indicates that those who did include Fitzsimmons tended to have him higher on their lists. Previously, Fitzsimmons had the 14th highest score at light heavyweight, and in the middleweight survey, Bob finished inside the top 10 where he placed 7th. Fitzsimmons was the first ever three-division world champion in boxing history. And I think this 8th place all-time finish is indicative of some of the things we see with more recent fighters, whose careers spread across multiple weight classes. Strong showing from Fitz. At number 7, we have Roberto Duran. Manos de Piedra earned 795 points and he made appearances on 23 out of 24. Duran previously received mention in two divisional surveys. He had the 17th highest score at welterweight, and in the lightweight survey, he finished at the top in first place. Technically speaking, Duran was tied with Benny Leonard in points, but Duran had one extra first place vote, and that gave him the edge to top the lightweight survey. So Duran was viewed as the greatest lightweight, and he also finished comfortably inside the top 10 on the all-time survey. Excellent results for Duran in this series. At number 6, we have Muhammad Ali. 909 points for Ali, and he finished on a perfect 24 out of 24. Of course, Ali also had a decisively commanding first-place finish in the heavyweight survey. So Ali was viewed as the greatest heavyweight, the greatest boxer in boxing's historically rich marquee weight class. And Ali also finished just outside the top five here in the all-time survey. Ali is yet another to have achieved that rare 2,000 plus points. Being viewed as the greatest heavyweight ever is, in itself, an impressive feat that stands on its own merit. Historically speaking, the heavyweight championship is one of the most coveted prizes in all of professional sports. So you would expect to see the heavyweight king somewhere in this discussion. In the case of Ali, he finds himself right in the center of that discussion. And when it comes to Ali, there was unanimous consensus that he belonged in both discussions. At number 5, we have Ezard Charles. The Cincinnati Cobra received 1,001 points, making him the first boxer in the all-time survey to be revealed with 1,000-plus points. Charles also appeared on a perfect 24 out of 24. Ezard previously received two mentions in the divisional surveys. He had the 19th highest score at heavyweight, and in the light heavyweight survey, Ezard Charles ran away with it. Over 2,000 points and 16 out of 24 first place votes. Strangely, he missed out on someone's top 15 at light heavy, but it didn't matter. His victory here was decisive. So the consensus surrounding the Cincinnati Cobra is beyond reproach. We have now reached the stage in the all-time survey where there is absolutely no question. As rare as 2,000 plus points is for the divisional surveys, 1,000 plus points in the all-time survey is even rarer. And things get rarer still as we continue with the countdown. Number four is Sam Lankford. 
Wow. 1,305 points for Lankford, 23 out of 24, and most impressive is the two first place votes. Lankford received mention in three different divisional surveys, more than anyone who preceded him on this countdown. He had the 22nd highest score at heavyweight, he had the 20th highest score at middleweight, and in the light heavyweight survey, he finished in 5th place. In that survey, Lankford proved to be the only boxer in the entire series to earn a 5th place finish without appearing on at least 21 lists, and he only received mention on 13. The fourth place finish for Lankford in the all-time survey is another example of the whole being greater than the sum of its parts. While Lankford proved tricky to rank in terms of each of the traditional eight, it wasn't tricky for those in the survey to rank him here in an all-time sense. The fact that 2 out of 24 view Lankford as the GOAT speaks volumes. At number 3, we have Harry Greb. 1,448 points for Greb, a perfect 24 out of 24, and like Lankford, Greb also received two first place votes. Greb has been nothing short of sensational in this survey series. In the light heavyweight survey, Greb earned himself enough points to land a 6th place finish, and in the middleweight survey, he was even more impressive. Harry Greb earned the top score at middleweight where he received exactly half of the first place votes in the most competitive playing field throughout this entire survey. So a 6th place finish at light heavyweight, a 1st place finish at middleweight, and now here he has a 3rd place finish in the all-time survey, where his numbers here are immensely impressive in the context of this survey. Incredible showing for Harry Greb throughout the series. At number 2, there is that man yet again, Henry Armstrong. Homicide Hank has been an absolute all-star in this survey series. 1,524 points, a perfect 24 out of 24, and he also received two first place votes. Armstrong already received mention in three divisional surveys, and amazingly he finished inside the top 10 in all three. In the featherweight survey, Armstrong earned himself a 6th place finish. Then in the lightweight survey, Armstrong earned himself an 8th place finish. But more impressive still, in the welterweight survey, Armstrong had his best finish, until now that is, when he finished 3rd place. So 6th place at feather, 8th place at lightweight third place at welterweight, and now here in the all-time survey, he has his strongest finish in what was already a powerhouse showing beyond reproach. All of this really does add up to Armstrong being a standout among standouts. Armstrong is the only boxer in the entire series where there is a strong consensus in four out of nine surveys. Impeccable showing from Henry Armstrong. Absolutely impeccable. And at number one, we have the great Sugar Ray Robinson. Oh my goodness. 2,160 points, a perfect 24 out of 24, and then a whopping 17 out of 24 first place votes. 17 out of 24 believe Robinson is the greatest boxer of all time. And that's a damn strong consensus. But this isn't the first time we've seen this sort of thing with Robinson. In the highly competitive landscape of the middleweight survey, Sugar Ray earned third place honors where he put up tremendous numbers. And then in the welterweight survey, it was an almost unanimous landslide. His numbers there were simply extraordinary. 2,380 points, a perfect 24 out of 24, and an absurd 23 out of 24 first place votes. And the guy that didn't have him in first had him in second. So if that second place vote was a first place vote, Robinson would have had a perfect score of 2,400. He had the highest score you can get without being perfect. And then here again in the all-time survey, Sugar Ray once again surpasses 2,000 points. 
he actually did it twice. While the consensus for Sugar Ray Robinson as the greatest boxer ever isn't as strong as the ridiculous consensus at welterweight, this is still a situation where more than two-thirds of the participants view Sugar Ray as the greatest of them all. So this is the entire Top 30 statistical breakdown for the all-time survey. As someone who did not participate because I did not want my opinions influencing the final outcome, I was thoroughly impressed by the top five. I thought the five names at the top were perfect. You can quibble over some of the ordering, but in my opinion, these are the correct five names. I was also struck that these very five boxers were the only ones in the survey who scored over 1,000 points. That seemed fitting to me, and as I ventured down, I think the entire top 10 looks very solid. So I love the top 5, and I see no issues with the top 10. That's not to say you couldn't make a case for some of these guys outside the top 10 being included instead. You can, some did, and many others might. But I have no complaints about this top 10 result. Looks pretty damn good to me. Two other things struck me. First, when I sorted the numbers, I couldn't help but laugh when I saw how close Mayweather and Pacquiao were grouped together. The fate of their future legacies appears to be forever intertwined, and the fact that these two were separated by a mere five points is another thing that seemed very fitting to me. But with Pacquiao and Mayweather, and to a lesser extent Roy Jones Jr., these are boxers whose careers have all ended fairly recently. And in the case of Manny Pacquiao, not only is he still active, he is actually a reigning world champion in his 40s. That marks Pacquiao as the only active boxer to appear among the all-time best. And he finished inside the top 20. As I've stated previously, when it comes to these boxing history buffs, change tends to be slow and incremental, never sudden or radical. Now, in the case of Roy, he certainly benefited from that first place vote he received. I'm not sure his perceived reputation has much room for improvement, but 10, 20, 50 years down the line, Pacquiao and Mayweather might be held in higher esteem. Time will tell. And another thing that struck me is that three heavyweights appeared inside the top 30. First place, Muhammad Ali. Second place, Joe Lewis. And ninth place, Mike Tyson. And then not listed here at the moment, but Larry Holmes was third in the heavyweight survey. And he also appeared in the top 35 countdown. So the top three heavyweights were inside the top 35. And then ninth place, Tyson joined them. This feels like a bit of a statistical anomaly when examined in the context of the heavyweight results. Tyson appeared on just two lists here, the fewest of anyone inside the top 35, where the strength of his one-third place vote catapulted him up. This isn't a situation like with Julio Cesar Chavez or Manny Pacquiao, guys who never had a top 10 finish in the divisional surveys, but who spent a lot of time outside the traditional eight with careers that stretched across multiple divisions. So Tyson feels a bit out of place here, and I'm not commenting on whether he belongs in the top 30 or not. Just saying that in light of his heavyweight numbers, this is surprising. Sugar Ray Robinson was the overall winner here. Not a big surprise here. In fact, frankly, it would have been a surprise if Robinson didn't win this. Now that's not to say you can't make a case for someone else, especially in that top five. The other guys in that group, Henry Armstrong, Harry Greb, and Sam Lankford, they all received two first place votes each. There are valid cases to rank each of those guys ahead of them. And even though Ezard Charles didn't receive any first place votes, you could reasonably make a case for him too, I think. And you could maybe even make a case for someone else there as well. Although once you get below the top five, those positions start losing steam real fast in my estimation. The overwhelming perception remains, and it's one that I strongly agree with. Sugar Ray Robinson is the all-time best boxer in the rich history of prize fighting. 
So here are the other names of boxers who received votes in the all-time survey. I'm not going to spend a lot of time discussing this, but I just wanted to show everyone all of the boxers who received mentions. So this is the rest of those 67 boxers who did receive a mention. Keep in mind all the participants submitted a top 25 list. So think of the guys on this list as guys who were competing for that 25th spot rather than looking at this as if these were supposed to reflect an accurate ranking. In other words, if you ask somebody for a top 25 and you do something like this, the strength of the results start breaking down once you dip below 25. Here is the final tally sheet. This is a snapshot of the entire series. Seven boxers received over 2,000 points in an individual survey. And Sugar Ray Robinson, the king of the survey, he surpassed the 2,000-point mark not once, but twice. And he also added in another 1,500-plus points in another survey. So in total, Sugar Ray earned more than 6,100 points. And that's it. The survey is effectively finished. I may still do one more recap episode in the future, but all of the final numbers have now been revealed. Speaking of surveys, I do have another survey underway if anyone is interested in participating. It's the Must Watch Boxing Survey. It's very subjective, even more so than this series was. Basically, I'm asking volunteers to list their top 25 must watch boxing matches. That is the theme. What does it mean? That's for the survey volunteers to decide. Basically, I'm looking to rank fights that you believe every boxing fan needs to watch. The link to the official survey is in the comments section. There are some basic guidelines listed there. And if anyone here wants to join in and submit your top 25 must-watch boxing matches, please check it out. And if interested, get me your list over there. Please note, I will only be accepting submissions in the official survey thread. Once again, a special thanks to the 24 participants who took the time and effort to create and submit their survey lists. Without them, this survey would not exist. When I started this survey that was largely open to interpretation, I did so because I had faith in the collective knowledge at the Classic Forum, and I believe my faith was well-placed and that the results were both interesting and educational for me. I hope you enjoyed them too. Please share your thoughts on the all-time results in the comments section. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed, and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.